What's up guys and welcome to part 7 of Every Soul's Born Boss Ranked Best to Worst and today we're going through 61 to 70. Yep. So, there's a lot, just a lot of mediocrity. I mean, we're still in the big sandy expanse stage of the list, so... <sighs> Never ending desert tundra. Yep. <clears throat> all these bosses may just well be the same thing at this stage. No. They're different enough that we can place them, but it doesn't matter at this stage. <laughs> nah, it doesn't matter whatsoever. But anyway, Suppose. coming in at number 61. Right, so it's Vanguard. Now, maybe thinking, why Vanguard? This seems to be an interesting choice, really. There's bosses just worse Better. than Vanguard. But it's more the context of Vanguard that makes him as good as he is. He's a, a genuinely difficult as a tutorial boss, and you're pretty much supposed to die to him. But if you actually do beat him, and it is possible to do, uh, you know you get quite highly rewarded for it, at least for right at the beginning of the game. Yeah, anyway. you get some soul packets and you get some upgrade materials. Of course, you still die, but at least if it's an obligatory death, at least they reward you for it. If you overcome the initial challenge, anyway, which would in this case be Vanguard, yeah, and it's so one of the reasons why we do like him. I mean, oh, as a boss, he's only he's got very few attacks. Um, but you pretty much have to always be 100% health or you'll one shot you, so there's that element in there as well. But it's nice just to be rewarded for beating a boss that we were intended to die to. Now, it sounds like we've got a lot of praise for this boss, but the, you know you need to remember it's that... It's just that one thing. It's literally yeah. just the one thing that if you beat him, the game rewards you in a good way. But over... and he is like obviously challenging, but overall his design is really super... incredibly bland. Like, but the, yeah, he's like basic asylum demon. The only reason he's better than like... Yeah, it's Fire like, it's just demon. Asylum, then. yeah the, only, the only reason he's better than them is just because of like the context of Demon Souls and where he's placed in it and the fact that you beat him and you get good stuff. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So. Yeah, that's Vanguard. So, 62 is Fool's Idol. Now, again, I think every boss does have like one thing about it that's kind of cool, but, you know, in Fool's Idol's thing is the whole it splits into multiple things, but it's still, it's just not great like it's okay yeah uh, you don't you don't really leave the boss fight feeling like anything you've done much. for the most part yeah because it has this one annoying thing where you have to kill the guy up above it before you can actually beat the boss which isn't even slightly obvious the only reason yeah. i know that is because i've been told that that's what you need to do yeah the the boss is uh <clears throat> the boss itself is kind of interesting though because as tony said it does have these that mechanic where it copies itself but it's got a few interesting things about it like it has traps the uh, the one that you actually want to attack is the only one that fires the big soul arrow thing, so that's just like one of the tells it has. For it. of course, there's the the real one doesn't have a health bar hovering above it because it's health bars at the bottom of the screen. There's that as well, but there's other visual tells for it. But other than that, it's just it, it's just pick one and attack it and see if it does damage. Yeah, it has very limited attacks, uh, and it's like once you it realize... has traps, it fires the home and soul arrow. Not home soul arrow, just the soul arrow, and it multiplies, and that's really it. it it's another really... boss that's very limited, like Vanguard, that just yeah. doesn't have many moves. Yeah, I think that's the reason why it's so it's so low. Like a lot of the bosses in this part of the list may have like kind of like a cool gimmick to it, but because of how it's just generally limited, the rest of the boss itself is is just it's just there's everything just so much better than it. Yeah, but that's Phil's idol. The armored spider. Oh, I just started. It. Did it. Alright, well, so next on our list is going to be the Armoured Spider from Demon Souls. So quite Demon Souls heavy this episode already. Yeah, but again, like we said, everything in Demon Souls has just been done kind of better, so everything just gets pushed way down. So. Yeah, and Armoured Spider isn't an overly challenging boss. It has that one gimmick with, like, the webbing, but once you notice it once, it never happens again. And then other than that, it's just stand in front of it and hit it. And then eventually you're going to have to run down the tunnel because it will reset the fight and then you have to run back up to hit it again and then you have to run away and then you have to run back up and hit it again and really like that's it's it. It's just not engaging like no. It, here's the thing when it comes to the, these kind of bosses it's just like did, do they even produce any sort of emotional reaction like at this point it's just ah. Uh... Yeah. <clears throat> there is that one cool thing you can do where you can like cheat to get behind the armoured spider. Yeah. But that's really like the most interesting part of the boss is an exploit and that you can glitch through the map and get behind it. Pretty much Armored Spider summed up. 
Yeah, I mean, there's just, there's just so little to say about it. Like, it's just so meh. Like, how do you even expand this into a full video? Like, it's... Eh. Okay, so next we have Duke's dear Freya from Dark Souls 2. Now, the reason why Freya is lower, first of all, like I just mentioned, in the Scholar update, or in the Scholar version of the game, Freya now has literally no challenge at all, because the only thing that was really annoying about Freya was the spiderlings, but if you just hold a torch out, the spiderlings run away from you in the new version of Dark Souls 2, and then all you need to do is bait out laser beam and hit her in the face. It is literally that simple. The boss has no lethality anymore at all. I mean, literally, Freya has, like, three attacks. Like, for, like it's, got, it's, got the, it's got the swing thing and the bite thing, and then this, the thing. The laser hyper beam. beam. Don't forget the body slam thing. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. No, it has like a jump thing as well as a swing. It's a bunch of like different. Yeah. It, it does have more. Like the attacks look very similar, but it has a bunch of attacks. They're just none of them are ever seen though, because you just bait the laser, run past it, hit it in the face, run to the other side of it, bait laser. Something I will say is I think uh, Freya's design is pretty cool. Like this massive armored yeah. spider. Is her really design. Cool. Her design's good. Yeah. But, but I feel that you know the armored spider from Demon Souls just it's it is more challenging than Freya. Hence why it's like yeah. the place above. But at this point, at this point, it doesn't even matter. You could switch them around. It doesn't even matter. It is pretty funny though to, <coughs> to like join someone's world as a co-op phantom and troll them by knocking off Freya's heads and healing her with warmth. <laughs> I guess that's funny. Okay, so yet another Demon Souls boss, and we've got the Tower Knight. Now, fuck. Could there be a less challenging boss other than like fucking Pinwheel or something like that? Just hit its heels, it falls over, hit its head, done. Like. Pfft. Yeah, because other than that, it's just. It just does a lot of damage in one attack. Because like, it, it doesn't have really any attack combos. It's just. It does a fuck ton of damage. That's pretty much it. And it has a lot of health unless you attack its head. Which, by the way, because of how Demon Souls works, if you get a Crescent Falchion right after the Phalanx, you can fucking full shot the Tower Knight. <laughs> it's stupid. So, like, the. And other than, and that thing as well, where it's just. It just has guys on the wall. That's pretty much the inconvenience. Just the men on the wall with the, with the bows. But you kill them, and then Wells the Tower Knight just can't do it. I suppose anything. it looks kind of cool. Ha 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 ha. Same music using the Penetrator fight. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, that that's Tower Knight. He's just the worst big man in armor, I'm, I'm guessing, because he's like the biggest man in armor. Is he the biggest boss man in armor? Let's see. Uh, um, I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, if he isn't, then I'll amend this statement. No, 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 no wait, there's more because there's uh, Dragon Rider and yeah, all that yeah. shit still to come. But, yeah, okay, so he's okay. not the worst. He's like bottom five. He's like top of the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Next, we've got Demon Fire Sage. <sighs> Just. It's. It exists. It is. It's what does it do that's interest? Nothing. It does nothing interesting. There is nothing different about it from Stray Demon, other than it does more damage and it's sort of on fire. And its name misleads you because it and the attacks mislead you because it makes it look fire damage when it's actually magic damage. So yeah, fuck you for like throwing us off. But I mean, there's not even anything to say about it. It just it exists. It's, it's not even particularly challenging. You just bear out the slam. Which the game gives you the shield to beat it within the first fucking hour of gameplay. If you go back to the asylum, uh, what's the ups? There's no upside. It's just so like you hit it and it hits you, and then you hit it again. Like there's nothing. There's nothing about fire siege. Like eventually, one of you die. Aye, that's that's pretty much it. Just like just like all life. Alright, so next up is uh, Stray Demon. So what you want to do is rewind the video about two minutes and listen to Fire Sage Demon again. Two minutes, literally 15 about seconds. Like 15, whatever. Just rewind it to Fire Sage Demon, listen to that again, and that's Stray Demon, basically. Like, they have to be in the same place because they're the same. <laughs> what more do you want? Admittedly, if you try to fight this thing when you're like level 40, it's kind of difficult. You get a katana within the first 10 minutes of the game, it's ridiculously weak to bleed. You can fucking like 5 shot it with a katana, <laughs> plus 5. It's, it's just not difficult. <laughs> it's shit. We should get a titanite slab. Oh, yeah, there's that. But so then maybe this should be in, in front of the Nah, because Demon thing. Fire Sage does more damage, so it's slightly tougher. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... 
Given this boss's props, it has some fairly striking visual design. Like, it does look pretty cool. Mm -hmm. can't, can't say it doesn't look cool. And I would admit, the first time I ever fought it, I thought it was difficult, but then, literally the first time, and then every time after that, I don't think I ever died to it. No. Oh no, no, I died to that one time when it, like, crushed me with its hand one time. Oh yeah, because its hitboxes are fucking ridiculous on its slams, but... <clears throat> yeah, it's just, Gaping Dragon just doesn't really... It's scary, that's it. This is a little bit of shock value, and then you die it the first time or whatever, and then you realise, this boss just can't hit me if I'm even a little bit observant. Yeah. And it just... Like, I think I've, I've flawless Gaping Dragon every single time since... Since I can remember, and then you just hit its ass a little bit, and there you go, it's dead. At least it has a tail cut, but yeah, other than get, that, get a cool just... weapon off it, to be fair. Yeah, but it's just this. It's so. shit. I know. It's just, it's just not good. It doesn't even have any particularly cool mechanics, it's just a big hang. Yeah, it's just teeth and legs and a wee nub when you cut the tail off. That's it's got a wee nub for a head as well. Oh, right, it's wee wibbly wobbly head that you do like double damage on. Okay, next on our list is the Iron Golem. Yep. So, what do you say about the Iron Golem? Nothing. It's nothing no. to say. He's just loads of armor, just a fuck ton of health, and summon Tarkus and you win. Yeah. Like, this boss is so low simply because, like, the game beats it for you. Like, you don't need to fight it like at all. And like, if you do fight it on your own, then it's just a massive HP grind. It'll not even you just hit his legs it falls over. Done. Like, oh yeah there is that. You can just knock it off. You don't even need to fight the boss fully. You can just kill it at like thirty percent health because you can knock it off the edge. Yep. But the boss will legit never hit you and if you can't get it off the edge, it's just gonna take you a while to kill it. Pretty much. Because you don't have elemental weapons at that point or anything like that. You've just got straight up physical damage for the most part and it just has a fuck ton of it. That's pretty much the boss. I mean, I don't think the design is particularly bad. I think it looks kind of cool. You get a cool weapon off it. I just wish there would have been something better than that for... Yeah, I reckon it could, it could have been way more intimidating. Could have been way better to like have an actual good boss before Anor Orlando. Yeah, that would have been nice. Yeah, but Iron Golem is just big man, tin can. Yeah. Nothing else to it. Right, so, fifth boss from Demon Souls, and it's Adjudicator. Now, <sighs> I'm trying to even think, like, what does Adjudicator, it's just a, a big fat guy, the sword and it can't hit you, like, you just roll under its arm. You bounce off it. It's kinda, is that even cool, I like, guess? I don't know, is it? <laughs> like, like, every question just answers itself with another question. <laughs> is it a good boss? I don't know, is it? Yeah. I don't think it is. If you're using magic, it can't hit you, and you just hit it in the head and it dies. Uh, yeah, there is that. Or if you're using a melee weapon, you just walk beside it and it can't hit you and it dies. It's just not difficult. But you do get the uh, the big knife, yeah. which is OP as fucking Demon's Souls. Hands down, the best weapon in Demon's Souls for like PvE is the Butcher's Knife without a oh, doubt. It's, it's good, it's it good just, shit. It, because you, you can't upgrade boss weapons in Demon's Souls, so it just comes with a fuck ton of damage anyway. <laughs> and it scales with strength and dex evenly, and faith as well, I think, which is just fucking retarded. The weapon's just OP, but that's really the best thing about Adjudicator is killing it so you can get it sought. But otherwise, it's just a big fat guy. Big fat yellow fuck. Mm-hmm. Well, I had bud for a heed. I know, I don't even understand its design, like, fucking... I don't know. God, it's... Just... I, I mean, if you thought this episode was bad, just wait till the fucking next episode. <sighs> the greyest of grey. I know, but anyway, that's it for this episode. Yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. If you even care about the next one, fuck. I know, they, they should care. They need to know whereabouts the grey places and the endless fields of grey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you need to know what, when's the transitional point between uh, good and bad bosses. Well, grey and bad bosses. Yeah, like when does the bottom of the meh become the top of the shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>